last week we talked about restricting light. So this is sort of the opposite, uh, diffusing light and what diffusion does. But, so I call it diffusion confusion because I think a lot of people misunderstand what's going on with diffusion and how it relates to soft light. I'm going to start with a little quiz for you. I'm going to throw you, show you three images and I want you to see for yourselves which one you think is lit with the softest light. So we've got A, B, and C, and I'll show you them individually. Here's A, here's B, C, and back to all three again. So which of those is the softest light? They look all the same to me from a softness standpoint. And that's the right quite answer. C for me. Nope, they're all of them because they're all lit with the same light. All I changed was the environment. So here again, we have a black background with negative fill, a black background with white fill, and a white background with white fill. If we look at the shadow edge transition, which is how I define softness, they're the same on all of them. Just the density is different. Again, three more images. A, B, C, and all three. Then I'd say they're all the same though. Yep. Thing is the Again, they're all the same. All I changed was the environment, adding the fill cards. There you can see them close up. Uh, the quality of light has variables. The size of the light relative to the subject, that determines the shadow edge transition. A larger light or lighting closer gives a more gradual transition, uh, and that's the quality, hard or soft. The environment determines the contrast or the density of the shadows. So if you're in a studio with light color walls, ceiling and floor, you get lighter toned shadows or less contrast in your images. Diffusion determines the spread of the light and it combines with the environment to determine the shadow density. So what is diffusion? Diffusion is defined as a spreading out of something. When we're talking about light, it's how the light spreads out from the lamp uh, to cover the subject. Diffusion does not soften the light. It doesn't change the shadow edge unless the diffusion is much larger than the original source. And we'll show you that in a minute. There's a slide for that. Diffusion directly on a light source does not increase the size of the source. So the quality of the light doesn't change. Diffusion spreads the light in a wider pattern and then it'll bounce off things in the environment and that'll give us environmental fills, what I call it. So if you're in a dark environment, adding diffusion doesn't really do much. You know, you're out in the middle of a football field in the middle of the night and you put any, almost any light is gonna look the same because there's nothing for it to bounce off except the green grass below. Adding additional diffusion material lowers the output of the light but doesn't change the quality of the light. You know, so many times I see people say, well, I set up my beauty dish with three layers of diffusion over it. And I'm going, well, okay, uh, why? The, the, adding the extra diffusion is just lowering the light. So maybe they couldn't turn their light power down enough to get a wide open aperture, but that's about all they're gaining from putting the additional diffusion on. Here we've got the straight, small light. And then when we add diffusion in the middle one, you'll see that the shadows stay the same on the subject. What's changed is the background's got a little lighter from light bouncing around the room. But if we pull the light back and put a bigger diffuser in front of it, then we have a big change in the look. But it's not the diffuser that made the change, it's making, making the light bigger. So I ask, is the sun a large source or a small source? It's both. The sun is massive in size, but so far away that it appears small to us. So the sun rays reach the earth parallel to each other. And the light is the same almost everywhere on the planet. I mean, if you have put your subject five feet in front of a tree, the light on the subject and the tree is the same. If the tree is 500 feet away, the light is still the same on the subject and the tree. But on a cloudy day, the clouds become our big diffusion screen and soften the light so that it comes in from many directions and gives softer edge shadows or no shadow at all, depending on how cloudy or overcast it is. 
And that's what we're trying to do in the studio with our soft boxes, umbrellas, and the like. So I mentioned the multiple layers of diffusion. Here we have a collapsible beauty dish in a dark environment, open face, then a single diffuser, a double diffuser, and a triple diffuser. And the light pretty much stays the same between all of them except from open to adding the first diffuser. All that's happened is I lowered the power. And I'm working with battery powered light, so that's usually an enemy. So people also talk about direct or indirect mounting of a light. So here you can see in the corner, I've got this light mounted indirect in a silver deep octa. And we'll compare the look of the indirect with versus the direct look. So there we've got the 30 inch octa direct with diffuser and indirect with diffuser. Again, very similar look. I don't think we're gaining that much by going to the indirect lights. Uh, I mean, they're a pain to set up. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, could you just explain the difference between direct and indirect? I'm not sure what you're... Uh... Yeah, so if we... Thank you. Let's see if we go back here. If you look at the light here, it's pointed into the, into the umbrella or, or deep octa here instead of pointing outward. So that's indirect. It's bouncing off the inside and then coming out. I threw a diffuser. I don't have the diffuser here so you can see what it looks like. And then I turn the light around and point it directly at the diffusion screen. And that's uh, where thank you. Yeah. That's where these two are. So the first one, the light is pointing out directly through the diffuser. And then the second one, the light's pointing into the octa and then bouncing back out. So I took two similar lights. Uh, soft, a Fotec soft lighter, 46 inch and a 48 inch octa and put my light meter right against the scrim and measured them. And there's, they're about the same amount of fall off from center to edge on both. But the octa doesn't have this big blob in the middle. Uh, so there's really, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference. Again, the Fotec soft lighter, the light is facing into the umbrella and then coming back out through the diffuser. On the octabank here, the light is pointing in straight and goes through an inner diffuser and then through the outer diffuser. So what does diffusion do for hot spots? Very little on subjects. Um, diffusion will even the light coming out of the lamp, on, which you'll see on shiny objects. But on people, hot spots you get on the nose and the forehead and the like are not going to be changed by adding diffusion. Uh, it sounds counterintuitive, but to get rid of those hot spots, you have to move the light closer to the subject. So adding diffusion attenuates the light evenly across the whole spectrum. So here in this image, we've got the seven inch bare reflector, then with diffusion, then with two sheets of diffusion. And you see that highlight on the nose stays exactly the same as does the shadow edge transition. Here we have a soft box with one layer of diffusion with two layers of diffusion. And you'll see in here the, the hot spot on the face stays pretty much the same with the, no matter how much diffusion's on there. But when I move the light in closer, now the hot spot is going away. So what's happening when you bring the light in closer? Think of hot spots as mirror reflections. When you look at a light in the mirror, I don't know if you can see a mirror here, the light is the same brightness no matter how far away or how close it is to the subject. Um, so by bringing the light in closer, it makes the light larger and softer and the hot spots become larger too. But by bringing the light in closer also made the subject brighter, but not the hot spots because I said they remain the same brightness. So the hot spot is not as different in value from the diffuse reflection. Now the whole scene is overexposed. So to compensate for the overexposure, you lower the power of the light or stop down the lens to get back to proper exposure. And that lowers both the hotspot and the subject brightness and they're closer together and less noticeable. So for example, if you cut the distance halfway, if you move light in from two feet, from four feet, the hotspot's gonna be four times darker. If you move it into a third the distance, the hotspot is nine times darker. And that's following the inverse square law in a different way. Usually we think of inverse squares, the light getting dimmer as you move it around. But with mirrors, the light stays the same brightness but changes size as you move it. So bringing, the, bringing it in closer here, you'll see what happens. With the light three feet away, you see the hot spot. It's small and very distinct. 
when we bring the light into 18 inches, the hotspot stays the same brightness pretty much, but everything else gets brighter and the hotspot got bigger. So then when I adjust the exposure back down, the hotspot's not as noticeable and it's bigger, it's more spread out. So that's why bringing the light in closer helps. It also works in product photography. Here on the first one, you can see the narrow strip when the light's far away. You can hardly read the text through it. As you get in closer, it gets bigger and less noticeable. When you're in really close, you still have a highlight to show that the can is round, but you can read through it and you have a nice large highlight. And going back to where I was talking about umbrellas versus soft boxes for shiny objects, you can see the umbrella, you see the light head and the spokes of the umbrella and everything in there. So for products, we tend to use square rectangulars and soft lights. Uh, baffles. Baffles are grids and things like that that restrict light. So where diffusion spreads the light, the baffle restricts the light. Diffusion is the enemy of a baffle. Uh, I see people say they put up like a grid on a beauty dish and they put a sheet of diffusion in front of it. And they've just defeated the whole uh, um, purpose of putting the grid on and they've lost a lot of light. It's, so here again with the seven inch bare reflector, then the seven inch with the 10 degree grid. And then I put the diff sheet of diffusion over the grid and we're pretty much back to where we were before but at a loss of four to five stops of light. Feathering is another area of confusion. So when we feather the light, it lets us control the, where the edge of the light falls in the scene. So I can light with the light pointing at two subjects, pointing directly at the A person, the A is brighter. If I feather it out towards the, the camera, I can make B and A similarly the same exposure. And then by pushing the light even further, I can make B, even though further away from the light, uh, brighter than A. So if, you know, people say they feather the light to make it softer, but that's not really what's happening. When you turn, turn the light away from the subject, it gets narrower, it becomes smaller, smaller light, harder shadow edge transition. But what's happening is the light is spread across the subject more. And then we usually add a fill card and that opens up the shadows, which and it gets perceived as softness. Hey, John. Uh, yeah. So when you feather the light, does it make any difference if you have a diffusion on the outside of the box? Yes, if you want it to bounce off more of the environment to fill in the shadows. Ah, uh, okay. If, it's, if you don't have the diffuser on there, it's going to be a narrower throw of light, and it's not going to bounce around as much. So you, it's going to be a little more contrasty. Gotcha, thanks. Sure. Uh, another common misconception is how much light, what is the spread of light from a soft box? Uh, so if we have different size soft boxes, here I've got a 36 by 48, so a three foot by four foot, a two foot by three foot, and then a 16 by 20. And they're all at the same distance from the subjects. And you'll see that they all have about a stop of light fall off from center to the edge, no matter which size we're using. The big changes in the shadows that they cast. So the big soft box has soft shadows, the medium soft box has medium shadows, and the small one has harder shadows. What about if we add diffusion to them? So here we have a seven inch reflector and a seven inch with diffusion. The shadows are basically the same shadow edge quality, but they're just lighter with the diffusion because the light hit the ceiling and the floor and bounced up to fill those in. But the shadow edge transition stays the same even though we had a diffusion. And then I took a narrow beam reflector. Um, this is a deep zoom and you'll see without diffusion, we have a fall off of two and two thirds stops. And adding the diffusion, we have fall off of only one and a third stop. So it brought in the output of the light. It opened up the shadows, but again, it didn't change the shadow edge. The quality of the light is still the same because the light is still the same size. The diffusion does not make it softer. So what questions do you have on what we've done so far? So John? Yeah. If, if I'm outside shooting without a reflector, Mm -hmm. Diffusion does me no doesn't serve any purpose then. Pretty much no, unless uh, unless you're seeing double shadows if you have a really small light. So let me jump over to the studio, 
So I've got a seven inch reflector on, on the light right now. So let's take a shot with that. So here, if we come in on the face, you'll see there's a slightly double edged shadow there. And, and that's the only thing you'll fix with diffusion. So if I take a sheet of diffusion here and I'm gonna just clamp it onto the light. I'm gonna have to power the light up about a stop for the diffusion. And we'll take that shot again. Um, let's just, so now we've got diffusion on it. And we'll compare those two. So there's with, okay, so there's with diffusion, without diffusion. Hardly any change between them. Where you might see a slight difference is just in the edge shadow here, diffusion will make one shadow instead of two. And what's happening there is that the, the light bulb See if we can point this. The flash tube is brighter than the surrounding. So by adding the diffusion, just homogenizes the light across the front of the soft of the uh, reflector there. But it doesn't really do anything to change the softness. So I think if you're outdoors, you're really not going to see that much difference with or without diffusion, unless you're putting up fill cards around it, around the subject. Does that make sense? Yes. Hey, can we see the one with the um, the diffusion again? Because I guess I'm getting confused by mm -hmm. what you mean by double shadows. It's hard to see in this one here, but sometimes the shadow edge gets, there's a hard edge shadow and then a softer edge shadow. Uh, let me see if I try a different reflector on there. If, if it'll... Okay, I, I I did notice that, and I always uh -huh. thought that was a symptom. That was a that was a indication of softness, where you ha sort of had that softer edge. Yeah, the softness will change the transition, which you could do by putting a bigger. So let's here. I'm going to pop a a soft box on instead of the seven inch, and let's see what we get there. Lock that on, and let's see what reading we get for that. 3.2, I'm gonna bring the power up a little bit. 4.5 is good, so. So the two point by three softbox, and we change, we go to 4.5. So no diffusion on the softbox? No, it's got the normal two layers of diffusion on it. I can show you the front of it there. And I put those stripes across there so that the catch light in the eye looks like a window pane. Here we go. So the softbox, hard shadow edge, very soft transition. Where we can make an even bigger difference that is if we put a white fill on the other side. So instead of black here, I'm gonna bring, turn this around to white. No change in exposure. So all I've done was change the environment here and there. Yeah, so from, there's the soft box on its own. There's the soft box with a fill card. So the shadow edge has still stayed, stayed the same here, but the shadows got brighter by bringing in the diffuser. 
Let's see, David posted in the chat, for groups, I use a seven foot umbrella with diffusion sock. I still get hot spots on the forehead, even if I feather. Bringing the light in closer is where you're gonna get rid of those hot spots. And that's really hard to do with the group. With a group, it may end up coming down to powdering people. Um, but here we can show you here, I'm gonna take this light and move it back. So let's get a reading on that. So F4, put distant down because the light is far away here. So there you can see the hot spot on the lips and the nose are pretty bright. If I take this now, I'm gonna come way in. Eight, I wanna go back down to the same exposure. F5, is that where we were? We're at 4.5, so let me come down another third. There. So the hot spots are changed slightly. The whole scene is overall a little brighter, but bringing, bringing the light in is your, usually your way to control the hot spots. and powder and makeup. Let me just see why go a little bit darker on that one. So John, yeah, when you feather, are you like, I've seen a lot of images, behind the scene images, where the box is feathered 90 degrees in front of the subject. So mm -hmm. that's, it looks like there's no direct light hitting right. the, that's the way, subject. Yeah, right now I'm pointing pretty much directly at the subject. So let's come across the subject now. I can't, I don't know if you could see it from that camera angle up there. I think you can see it now that the, the yeah, light is, yeah. is facing more around across the front of the subject. So let's take that one and see what we get there. So that's with it feathered and close in. Let's pull the light back again, go up a little higher. Let me take the reading on that one now. F2, let's bring up the power, 4.5. So let's back to where we were here before. So this is with the light further away. So the hot spot should get a little brighter. And welcome Anders into the group, Anders from Profoto. I haven't seen you in a while, glad, glad to have you here. So from f closer in, from further away. So this is strange. To me, it seems like the hot spot is reduced when it's further away. No, the hot spot is smaller when it's further away, uh, but not brighter. I mean, it's like a mirror reflection. Uh, so let's look. Oh, yes, it. smaller is probably the better word. This is the further away shot, right? This one is here. This is the further away. Yeah, okay. Closer in, we can go closer in and stop it down a little bit, and I think you'll see the difference a little more. Uh, So we're talking about feathering, controlling where the edge of the light goes. And feathering makes the light a little smaller, so it's gonna be a little harder, but it's a little more even because it's bouncing off the fill card on the other side. So another thing that we were talking about was the um, comparing direct and indirect. And let's compare what happens with a soft lighter with and without the diffusion on it. So I'm gonna take this light out of here for, for now. And I'm gonna, so this is the Fotex soft lighter. This is the 48 inch version of it. I'm gonna bring it in about where I put it. I'm gonna take the white out because I wanna see exactly what the light's doing without the environment affecting it. 
So let's power this guy up. Hook up my meter. And there we're getting F8. Yep, F8. So here you can see that we've got the soft lighter with the, which is the umbrella and diffuser together. It's saying we want F8. So let's bring our camera to F8 and do that and make sure that's coming into Lightroom. Let's soft lighter two with diffusion. So I'm tethering into the Canon ES utility and that's feeding into Lightroom and then Lightroom's feeding into Dropbox. So we have these here. So that's with the diffuser. Let me do a shot with fill so we can compare all four ways. So here comes my fill, diffusion. white fill. So let's, there it is with the white fill. So now I'll take the diffusion off. And we'll see how much the diffusion versus the environment affects the light. This is where it always helps to have an assistant. <laughs> That used to be me. <laughs> so let's put this back in. It's the same spot. And let's get a new reading without the diffuser. It's still reading F8, so let's try that. So this is No diffuser. No fill. There's no diffuser and no fill. So the diffuser and no fill. And no diffuser, no fill. Very little difference between them because there's no environment for the diffusion to bounce off of. I have a black ceiling here, black walls around the subject. They're staying pretty much the same with and without the diffuser. But then if we do add the diffuser, no diffuser with fill. No fill with diffuser, no diffuser, and that's fine. Diffuser with fill. So the fill is what's really changing the, the look here. The shadow edge is staying the same because the light size has stayed the same, but the environment is now filling in the shadow, opening it up, which some people again see as softer, even though the light is still the same. But John, to me, the um, area between the lower part of the collarbone and her shoulder mm -hmm. look hotter, if you will, than the last photograph that you took. Um, see, where the this looks like everything is more natural, mm -hmm. um, and the and the other the previous one, the um, that area was really light. See. I mean, that's the difference to me. The yeah, and, and where I'm, I'm mostly looking in the, the facial area here. I mean, we could change some of that by the height of the light, too. That, that umbrella is a little low for the subject there. Um, but yeah, I can see what you're talking about in, in through the collarbones here. Hey, John, this is Joe. Um, yeah. You don't necessarily have to do a demonstration if you don't uh -huh. feel like it, but, but grids over the diffusion. Um, uh, 
reduce the amount of environmental fill? Is that what happens with the grid? The, the grid over the diffusion. I've, I've, I've only tried that with a beauty dish once. I never really did anything other with it. I don't know if Anders, do you want to jump in on that? I mean, we, we covered putting diffusion over a grid and how that just destroys the, the look of the grid. Um, but what happens if you have an open reflector with, with and without diffusion behind the grid? But uh, in general, it, it doesn't make that much change. Uh, if, if you're going to use diffusion and the grid together, just like uh, John mentioned earlier, which I first met, first of all, I need to compliment you on, on this episode. This is probably well, thank the you. <laughs> most, most important uh, knowledge that people don't know about is covered in this diffusion conclusion. <laughs> so, a lot of credit for you to do this. Well, thank you. Um, but if you're going to use it, use it before the grid, because if you use it after, you just lose a lot of light and you lose the effect of yeah, so that's the slide that's up on the screen now. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah I don't know if diffusion before the grid is going to change much. Um, Not much, I mean, because the grid will uh, limit the light so much anyway. It will right, really restrict the light spread, mm -hmm. and that's what the grid should do. So, so a lot of photographers use the uh, diffusion, especially in, in, in fashion, uh, for... for almost like the placebo, like a sugar pill. It just, they put it on everything. Just because right. they, it's, not it's what I call baking the ham, just because it's always been done that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, you're, you're, so, so I, I would just recommend not to use diffusion uh, with a grid. Yep. In general. You, the only thing that happens, you lose light. And if you're in a battery driven system, you consume that. Light. Exactly. Yep. That's Thank a you. benefit and it's good. Good. Thank you. So if people don't know Anders, he's with Profoto. Um, if you look at the Profoto Academy I'm videos. I'm just trying to, here we go. I even got the Profoto oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice, nice little beer growth there, going for the, the COVID look. Corona look, yeah. <laughs> cool. So other questions we, out there. You know, we've got a chance. You've got myself and Anders here. This is a really special day. So John, this is Al again. Yeah. Basically, just to summarize then, without a reflector, uh, there's really no use for a, a diffusion? What do you mean without, oh, without, 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 without a, a grid or not. reflector board? Sure, because the diffusion is spreading the light to bounce off things in the environment. So if you don't have, if you're in a dark, large studio with black or black walls like I have here around it, with and without diffusion is really not much difference in, in look except for the amount of power coming out. It's when you bring in the white walls and the reflectors and, and the like. And reflectors here, we're talking like foam core, uh, white cardboard and things like that, not the, the reflector that goes on the light. And it's always confusing to, we're talking about a bell reflector on the light or if we're talking about a, a sheet of foam core. Yes. Black. So yeah, without, without something to bounce the light off of, the diffusion really doesn't make that much difference. Just say in the middle of the night, in the middle of a football field, most of your modifiers yeah, are pretty I similar. Did it, I actually did a test uh, since I'm a house photographer on one of the largest uh, arenas here in Stockholm, Sweden, so, you know, I did a test in the middle of a European soccer football field mm -hmm. and with, with them without diffusion, it was absolutely no difference. So. I had to test it. Yeah. Not yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I encourage people to try things out. Um, you know, you, you read things and hear things online all the time and just go with them. And you don't know if, you, if it's right or wrong. So that's why, I, I, especially in this time where I'm locked in, not going anywhere, set up a mannequin, start taking pictures, you know, try, try all, all your modifiers with and without fill in a dark environment and a light environment, see what, what this stuff actually does. Great, thanks. I've just been wasting all that power out shooting <laughs> with diffusion outside. <laughs> yeah, I just don't go outside. <laughs> diffusion is great it, for many other applications. I mean, you even you move it further away from, uh, from the light and then you cut holes in it. Mm -hmm. Me and David, we do that. 
I think every single time because what happens then is that you get areas on whatever you're lighting, like if you're lighting a background, uh, if you put diffusion and then cut holes in it, like just take yeah, a so knife it's, and go it's sort of like it's sort of like a cucaloris. Yeah, and then you but, get these nice white spots, but not uh, quite. Slight, yeah, slightly yeah. brighter spots, uh, which looks really natural if you want to make a natural looking uh, background and uh, and make it a little bit more interesting. Yes, yes. Sure. So if you could take a diffusion and cut stuff in it like this, exactly. Yeah. And but I don't but I don't have a diffusion don't. material to cut up right now. But yeah, that's another thing to try definitely. And we go really random. I mean, we go uh, psycho you know, with a knife and just, <laughs> just to get the re <laughs> Exactly. We normally sing that song as well. <laughs> uh, but it's just to get the randomness in. Yeah. yeah. Just how, like is, nature does. how is David doing? He's busy. Um, so we're busy shooting a lot of, uh, we're doing a lot of film lately, uh, all uh -huh. kinds of advertising and so forth. So, yeah, uh, we're talking about David Bishu. Who's another great educator and photographer, who, and we all kind of the three of us really agree on just about everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we really do. I'm happy to see that you're you're doing this and, and sharing your knowledge because it's uh, you speak truth. Thank you. Very few, Thank you. very few <laughs> people do that when it comes to light. Because light is it can be very confusing, confusing, especially if you look at. Uh, some other educators, some that we even pay for, and mm -hmm. get the information. So it's easy to fall into traps, and then you end up putting diffusion in front of the grid, for example. If you put it like really close, then you lose a lot of light. But if you move it further away, maybe like six, seven feet away, you light up from the background, the grid will restrict the light from hitting your, your subject, mm -hmm. or your talent that you're shooting, or, or some other areas, but you still get it on the diffusion and you take that nice. Yeah, and I'm looking back at the chat. So David, who was talking about the hot spots on a large group, uh, because the light has to be so far away for the large group, it does come powdering the people is sometimes more helpful than changing the lights around. <laughs> and let's see, Daniel is asking recommendations for using gels with a soft box. Um, big gel in front or a, or a small gel with close to the bulb. Um, well, the small gel closer to the bulb is smaller and cheaper. Yeah, it's more achievable. And I've been using these aperture um, modifiers. They're, they're um, what do they call it? The light dome and the light dome mini. And they come with, with a gel holder that snaps in front of the flash tube, which blocks all the light except coming through the, um, through coming out from yeah. the light. And let's see, David's saying, so again, with a seven foot bounce umbrella, the diffusion sock has no effect on hot spots. The benefit of diffusion on umbrellas to spread the light and it doesn't make it any softer, right? If, there's, if the diffusion is the same size as the light, it's not gonna make it any softer. It's gonna make the light more homogenous across the front of the reflector, but we're not photographing the front of the reflector unless we're photographing maybe a wine bottle or something like that. You might see it slightly in the catch lights in the eyes, but it's not going to be that big an effect that I really worry about it. Let me see if I have the the aperture. To show you what it what it does. Hey John, this is Joe, and uh, just to comment that I, I don't do this kind of work all the time, but when I uh -huh. do, I'm often using speed lights, and um, power is definitely a limitation. And I'm sure I've been overusing diffusion. Sure. I'm just kind of uh, forcing myself to you know have to fight. Uh, the limits of the small lights. So mm -hmm. really appreciate this. Yeah, so what I have here in my hand is this is part of the aperture light. And this goes inside the soft box and it's a magnetic catch here. So I can put a, a gel in there. Of course I'd do a gel that's the right size, but that just gives you an idea of, of how it works. And that's really effective, uh, especially if you have the double layer of diffusion in there so that the small light coming out of here Hits the, hits the first layer of diffusion, and that spreads it out to fill the front of the soft box. So, and it's hard to get gels that are gonna fit the whole front of the soft box, at least not inexpensively, where you, know, you can buy a pack of 12 by 12 inch gels for a reasonable price, but if you start buying it by the roll, it gets expensive. Double diffusion in front of a soft box just really limits your light output, correct? Yeah, 
yeah, so let's see if we had that, go back to that slide there. So there's open faced on a beauty dish with one layer diffusion, two layers of diffusion, three layers of diffusion. The quality of light's the same, but I've had to open up and or raise up the power to match on each one. So, I mean, it, it, it works if you have a light that you can't turn the power down enough on. I mean, I have some old Speedatron studio equipment that doesn't power down, you know, 2400 watt second box. If I want to get down to 2.8, then I got to pile diffusion on it. But or ND, you said ND filters. Yeah, or ND filters. So, let's see, David's asking using a beauty dish outdoors with the strobe mounted in the back. Direct light source, what would be the advantage or disadvantage of using the front diffusion? Uh, outdoors, I don't think there's any advantage to the diffusion. I mean, a beauty dish, you want sort of this hard edge light. It's this little smaller, more directional light. By putting diffusion over it inside with white walls around it, you're just going to fill in the shadows. Often with a beauty dish, you want to bring negative fill in so you get the shadows on the cheekbones. can be a little bit different, depends on the beauty dish, if it has a silver inside or a white inside. So the silver is a little more directional, a little more contrasty? Yeah, but it also impacts the catch light. So mm -hmm. how, how the catch light looks, it, it will look different if you have a sil uh, silver beauty dish with the diffusion on next to silver. So we get a different catch light. Yeah. And speaking of catch lights, I mean, there's always the controversy, round or square. Um, I, if in a close-up portrait, I tend to go for square catch lights because I'm thinking doorways, windows, and skylights, or even a big open That's sky. That's why I like you all, so much, John. They, they all present themselves as a rectangle. I mean, I don't, I yeah. never take pictures of people staring directly into the sun unless they're tearing up or covering their eyes. You know, we don't see round catch lights except in maybe some bird pictures. I, I totally but, agree. It's, uh, <laughs> we also use squares a lot. Uh -huh. Yes, because they, they mimic windows. Hey, John. Yeah. Getting, getting back to the, your slide with the double and triple diffusion, does it make a difference if you have that one sheet of diffusion that has the extra stop of diffusion only in the center? Do you know what I'm referring to? I have seen... Some diffusers, yeah, there's, so there's an extra thickness in the middle. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, I have not used them. I have no idea. I mean, to be honest with okay. you. And again, I think it would, it would be noticeable in mirrored subjects like wine bottles and the like. You know, but on a person, I don't think it's going to be all that much difference. Where, where's my wine bottle photo? You know. An umbrella and a round modifier versus a rectangular modifier. You know, in there, mm. if it was a, hot, a darker spot in the middle, I think you would see it here, but on a, on a person, not so much. I mean, by the time you retouch it or it goes to print and gets sep color separations done, you're not going to be able to tell. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I missed a little bit in the, in the beginning of this, but I'm, I'm going to catch up with that. Yeah, definitely. But really, this is so good information. I mean, people online, download this, look at it, because you'll be <laughs> one of the handful of people in the world that don't know about this. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you, Anders. <laughs> this is yeah, never, never, three people talk about this. Yeah, are, are you in Sweden? Yeah, in Sweden. Staying well? Just me. Yeah, yeah. So far, it's just a little bit boring. Mm -hmm. uh, just less work. <laughs> I yeah, so a lot, uh, work a lot with artists that come into town. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm uh, doing these presentations uh, twice a week on Monday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, so I said last week I did it on grids and restricting light. So this week I went decided to go the other way to diffusion. And coming up on Thursday, I'm going to have a couple of lawyers in to talk about contracts and cancellations and things that people are going through now. Uh, 
And if you go to my website, you can see their full schedule of what's coming up. So this has been interesting trying to run this all as one person, <laughs> running back and forth to the computer and to the different cameras. Uh, I'm doing but, demonstrations. Yeah, so what I've, what I've done here for those interested is in Zoom, I have three cameras. I have the, the camera that you're looking at now on my computer. And then I've got an old video camera coming in from here, but it's getting blocked by the soft boxes. And then I've got my DSLR coming in here for another view. So I can switch them all from within Zoom. So, well, thank you yeah, all for joining me. me. Uh, again, if you have questions, you can email me and we'll be here again on Thursday and next Monday. So thank Great. you all for joining me today. Thanks, John. Uh, let me jump back to the, so you can see me. And then I remember the cameras on this monitor. Okay. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks a lot, Thanks, John. John. A lot of Thanks.